And you can ask me questions. Yeah. Okay, our second World War, vet, vet, World War I veteran this afternoon is Mr. John Ledoux. John, you were in the Navy during World War I, and I'm glad that we've got a Navy veteran. Finally, we've interviewed a whole bunch of people from World War II, and you're our first Navy veteran. What about your service? Where did you uh, go in and, and like that? I was working at Stafford Hof machine shop on Mill Street. It was about 17 or 18. The government took all the steel away from the factory and had it closed down. Yep. All right. I was laid off and I went to work then in the arms in Ilium. Finished filing. I was making 33 to 35 dollars a week up there. It's big money in those days. It's hard work. All right, my number came up, so I listed in the Navy in Albany, New York. You had to be 21 then to join the Navy in the First World War. But some of them got in, lied their age, and they found out and they sent them home. You didn't lie your age, did you? No, I was 21. And I was sent out to the Great Lakes Station in Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Then, after training, I was put on a draft to go to sea. There were about 25 to 30, 40 sailors. One of the sailors got very sick coming down on the train. So we stopped at Buffalo, New York, at five o'clock in the morning and got a doctor and he told us that we'll all be quarantined in the car because the guy had the mumps. So they sealed up the car on us, a seal that they put on freight cars. And they switched us here. We came back through Little Falls and they switched us on a railroad someplace in Albany down to Kingston on the West Shore Railroad. On the West Shore, that West doesn't even exist anymore. That, That's yes, the West Shore was running then. They cleaned out the station and we had some lunch there. Then they put us back on the train again, sealed up the car again. Then we went to Waukegan, New Jersey. Then we stayed there until the Navy came to get us. They put us in dump trucks for them. Four sailors outside, colder than hell. Yeah. <laughs> Drove us. What time of year was this? In the early spring, I think. Yeah. It was very cold. 1917? About then? Yeah. It was 17 or 18, I can't hear, yes. Yeah. All right. Way across, across the river, way down into New York City, way over to Stone's Navy and 69th Street in Brooklyn. And when we got over there, I walked in the place and the doctor was there working, waiting for us. He told us, strip down. So we had to take a bath and wash our hammocks and everything. And he gave us all a shot. Well, out of the 35, then they took us over to the barracks where we were going to stay. And the young fellow there said to us, I have charge of you here. He says, any of you guys don't think that I'll be the boss over you. We said, let's step out and have it right out now. That's Uncle Sam's Navy in the First World War. Yeah, they were a little rough on the troops there now. Huh? He was a champion wrestler and boxer of the Atlantic Fleet, but he treated us very good. We're in detention for three weeks. Nobody came down with us. We didn't have penicillin in those days. I don't know what he gave us, but it worked. Yeah. And then they made up a codo. Then I was put aboard Wilhelmina, that ship I was on, yeah. right there. Yes, that's Wilhelmina. That was built in Newport News in 1912. It's an oil burner. It's a West Coast ship. People don't realize that. A ship is built different on the West Coast than it is on the East Coast. The water and currents are different. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's right. People don't know that. And uh, so they put me aboard ship there. And I remember well, I sat on the fantail and going out to sea the first night about six or eight o'clock after I had chow. We passed by the Statue of Liberty. I looked up at it and stuff. 
I said, will I be back or not? Well, the good Lord sent me back. Had you ever been on a ship before? No. First time no. out? I was only 21 then. Okay. All right. All right. How about seasick when you hit those first Atlantic swamps? I was very seasick, and I ain't afraid to tell you to anybody. And we couldn't get relief. We had to go on and watch just the same. What I did on board ship, they took me down a ladder in the bottom of the ship, about 18, 20 feet underwater. And the man says to me, the officer, he says, draw yourself a gallon of oil. We will show you how to oil the ship. That's the main ship going right down through. The main shaft. Yeah. Main shaft. Yeah. And you'll have to feel the bearings. He says, and if anything goes wrong on your ship, on, on your ship, you'll get a court martial. Oh. And that's no lie. Yeah. Well, I think I've been oiling ever since. <laughs> we had a very dangerous job. We had a stand between the arm comes over the engine like this. Pitman arm, yeah. Hold your hand here and throw your fingers in about that much to feel the main bearings. If you ever slipped and fell in there, you've been killed. Yeah. So we did the best I could. Now this ship was going to Europe with a cargo. Cargo, stopping everything. And then, then afterwards, we brought soldiers back. Uh -huh. How many trips did you make back and forth? Oh, about six or eight. Did you see any German submarine? No, we didn't. We see we see a lot of floating mines. We saw a whale one day. That's no lie. He's close. Shoot up. There were small birds, like sparrows, flying from one ship to the other. I don't know what they were. They landed on the the ship. Like I don't know what they were. We had very good food. We never we never sat down to eat. There wasn't room. We lowered the tables from the ceiling down on legs and ridges on your table so the beans and stuff wouldn't fall on the floor. We had very good food. This ship probably any storms, had any bad storms? Yes, terrible. Because this ship was for the west coast, not the east coast. The Atlantic is a little rougher. Yes, it was built different. All right. And then one trip coming home, I got off a watch at 8 o'clock. We had four on and eight off. And if you went on from 12 to 4 in the daytime, you had to go up from 12 to 4 at night. Same ship. That's how it worked. I got 52, let's see, 52 75 a month. Pretty good pay. Wasn't bad. Uh, no. Did you make any rain? Any what? Any rain? Any rating? No. Yes, I was she just made second class. All right. We're transporting in the trucks. I got all that. I was sent to the sea. I got all that. And things like that. Uh, all right. So I went up on deck at 8 o'clock, and I run into a fellow from Little Falls, Joe Harvey. He lived up in Manham here. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Never mind. All right. So he said, come on down in the underneath the deck. We got all the little falls guys. And these are the, let me hold that up and we'll see if right. Mr. Liakano can get us a picture here. All right. Know if he That's a picture of the little falls there. fellows. I have you, a couple more. You want to name them off the way they well, are? Well, I got some, I got another one there I'll name too. Okay. Okay. You name them off and I'll all right. hold them as steady as I can. Gonna name them now, and I'll keep on. This. All right. There are the names. This is from the this left is, side to the right. All right. This there. The first man here is Kaiser. Yeah. His father run a blacksmith shop on Albany Street across from the Times, yeah. back of the city old city hall. Yeah. The next guy is a Zeitler from Herkimer. He ran a drugstore. He was a pharmacist in Herkimer. And the next guy is Euchre from Dalzell. Uh -huh. All right. The next guy over here, Thuringorn. He's from Gloversville. All right. 
down below here now. The lower. The lower, lower left. left. Yeah. Murray Brees. He worked in Snyder's a good many years. He ran a liquor store in Hartford. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Harrison. Donaldson. Next guy. Yeah. And this is myself, and Sailor. That, uh, and Fred Irving. That would be Dr. Irving's father uh -huh. in the hospital here. Right. All right. And over here, Fred Wheeler. He lived down West Main Street. All right. These were all soldiers you're bringing home. Yes. They're coming back. The they're war is over. coming back from the war. The war is over. Yes, the war is over. Okay, Sorry. Joe, I think we can take this picture all right. down now. Now, if you want to hold this picture here, I got a couple of guys on here. All right. We'll try to get this next picture. Now, this, is, this is a feral. Uh-huh. And this is Timmy Danny from Little Falls, and this is Joe Harvey. I knew Timmy Danny. He used to run the girl up on uh, I said brother. Boomer Street. I said brother. Oh, his brother. Okay. All right. In that picture, we have a Farrell from Middleville, Timmy Danny from up in Manhill, and Joe Harvey, all from Little Falls. Okay. Okay. All right, let me get the boat here. I'll hold right. the boat. Wait. I got her. Yes. I got one more picture here. All right, let me hold this boat. Can you see that, Joe? Yeah, that's good. What was the name, the Wilhelmina? Will, yes, USS Wilhelmina. Right. It's an oil burner built in 1902 in Newport News, one of the first ones ever made. We went across the ocean in nine days. That's unusual in the First World War. Was that a troop ship or a cargo ship? Or? Well, it's a honeymoon ship. They built it from used to run from San Francisco to Honolulu. Oh, okay. Honeymoon ship, they call it, in cargo. But you didn't lose any power because if an oil burner wasn't working, they started the other one and then shut this down to clean it. Okay. Got another picture for yes, us, John? Yes, I have. All right, let me hold this one up then. This is Dave Hurley. Oh, yes. From here? Yep. He I was interested in history All very right. much, so. Well, he gets a little higher. Can you get it? Yeah. All right. Dave Hurley. We walked in a drill, a grill over there in Brest, France, and he says to me, what the hell are you doing over here, John? <laughs> he was drinking a beer. And we had a great time. He worked for the United States government in Brest, France. So I came back home, went up on Rose Street and told his mother that her son was all right over there. Then we went over again, I went to see him, and I told him that his mother was all right. <laughs> so they're all dead and buried today. Which, which one is, is he? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Right, right here. Okay. okay Got it now? Yep, fine. Okay. Very good, John. Okay. So wow, then. These are interesting pictures. So the war is over. Yeah. So I had a chance to put the ship back in service down through the Panama Canal, Ireland, they pay me and fly me back home. I didn't go because I had a girl here waiting for me. And you came back home? Come back home. And we got off the train. And Mr. Prust took my stuff home. I lived on White Street for 50 cents. Who was that? Mr. Prust on the taxi here. Horses, horses. 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 horses, horses then. Yeah. So my wife now, Retta, Worked over in the Phoenix Mill in the office. So she wrote a note, John just came home, goodbye. So that's it. In a year's time, we got married. All right, and what did you do for a job when you came? All right. Mr. Guinea got me a job down in the tannery. Which Guinea was that? Mr. Guinea. He, he lived on White Street where the house was tore down. Well, they got a parking lot. You wouldn't know him. No. I he was a shaver in the tannery. I lived in this house a long time. Uh -huh. He did. I went down there and I worked for a minister. He's an electrical engineer. You drank or smoke in those days, he didn't wash it. No drinking, no smoking? No, sir. I never smoked. That was the Barnett Tent. Barnett Leather Company. Yeah. And I had a good job there. Very good. So they want to move to Malden. Massachusetts, I didn't want, they want to take me with them. I didn't want to go. I had no security. So then Jack Herkel worked with the main man down at the tannery in the machine shop. He went to Pratt to educate himself. 
He came back and he got a job in Hanson. Pratt. Now that's out in uh, near Chicago somewhere. No, no. That's in New York someplace. New School. York. Okay. I've heard Am I right? Of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. Two year course it is. Okay. So he came up to the house one day and he said, Come on, John, I'll give you a good job. So I went over to Hanson and I was a production foreman for for under 35 years over there. But I didn't do that, I did mechanical work. Okay. I'm retired now, about 24 years. And you are almost 90, you'll be 90? I'll be 90 in March. Okay. And thank God I'm living pretty good. You're looking pretty good, Shane. Now getting back to World War I, yep. how do you think they treated the veterans after the war? Was it Not so good. The only thing we got is a pension from New York State, $300. $300. I'm getting a pension for the government now. It's not very much. They won't pay anymore. But if a veteran today wants to bring his uh, trouble and hires a lawyer, the government will only pay him $10. It started in the... I got it here right in this paper. My grandfather, grandmother did it. She had to pay ten dollars to get a pension in Pittsburgh, Mass. That's where she, down there where she lived. Civil War veteran pension. It's the yes. same thing right now. They never changed it. Yeah. It's only ten dollars. The a government month. will pay. A month. Right? A month. No, no, ten dollars. That's why any of these lawyers today won't take me or Tommy or any you or anybody else. No. They won't pay it. Huh. That's right. Goes ten dollars. So I'm getting a pension from the government. And we're doing all right. All right. Pretty good. Well, was there anything more about your military experiences? You can no, it wasn't us? much. You went to uh, Paris, you said. I went to Paris. All right, tell us about uh, oh, Paris. I went to Paris. What we did, we took the canteen money, split the ship right down the middle. Canteen was the bar money, right? Bar, yeah. bar money yeah. or anything that you've sold in the canteen instead of turn to the government. They, they let them do that. So we went from Brest, France on a train one night. I thought we'd die. We sat on regular pews with a block of wood to hold our head and, the, and all the windows are out. <laughs> but one thing, we stopped at Le Mans at the crossover, five o'clock in the morning. The Red Cross was serving donuts to us and coffee. Oh, we had to give them credit for that. Yeah. And we landed in Paris about 11 o'clock. And we started to get a place to where we room. We slept yes. by the Eiffel Tower. 50 cents a flop. Underneath the Eiffel Tower and all over. We slept on straw mattresses. We wanted to go to the John. We had to go 10, 15 steps. Big roll like this here. Ash cans underneath you. That's right. I didn't bother anybody. They didn't bother me. So when I went a lot of places to see. I went over to Versailles, and I had a good time. I had only had eleven dollars, and I got six francs and fifty centimes for a dollar. I think I got two pieces of silver home yet. So then we came back, and then I I was on reserve for three or four years. I had a list for four years, but they can keep it. So I got married on that money. I got from the government, reserve. Oh, that's pretty good. Then I got married, I raised two children, educated them, and now we're married 66 years, thank God. That's Frank, all. can 